Hello and welcome to Kane & Company. I'm David Kane and today I'm going to be joined by Mark Townsley, the Director of Business Development for the Bachman Auto Group. Let's get right to it. Joining me today is Mark Townsley, the Director of Business Development for the Bachman Automotive Group in Louisville, Kentucky. And I'm really thrilled to have you on the show, Mark. I've known you for a very long time. You've been with the dealership a long time. And, and from what I understand, Bachman's got a big anniversary going on this year. That's correct. Yeah, 30 years, 30 years of business here. We've actually, the family's been in business since 1924. Wow, excellent. Well, uh, given that you look so young, it's hard for me to believe that I've known you as long as I have. But tell me a little bit about your role in the operation, how long you've been there, and why you enjoy the automotive industry. Sure. I, I've been here since uh, May of 2005, so a little over 11 years. And uh, my current role is, of course, Director of Business Development, which means, um, I guess, after you've been with uh, the dealership this long and done a lot of different jobs within the dealership, you kind of handle just a lot. So fortunately, I'm involved in anything from the finance department to the parts departments to the service departments to helping them with their internet presence to the BDC departments to just a lot of anything we can do to make our business better, um, I get to help with. So it's a lot of fun. I love my job. Excellent. So uh, something unique in, in your position there, I always like to ask this of someone who works in a family business. Uh, being raised in a family business, I always thought that my colleagues who weren't family members thought we were a little crazy. I know you would never dare to say that on, on uh, this interview, but what is it like and what joys does it bring to be with a, a business that really takes it home with them and it means something to them each and every day? You know, I, I go to church with our dealer and his son, who will eventually take over the company. And I guess the if there was one thing I could say I like about it is there's no other levels of, of when something goes wrong, having to go through um, uh, any other departments or groups to fix it. It is the dealer or his son or especially our general manager will step in. And dealing with that close-knit family, they make sure we always, always err on the side of the customer. If something goes on and we make the wrong decision, but we did it because we knew it was the right thing for the customer, uh, it's never considered the wrong decision. And I, I, I love that about working for the family. Well, you also are blessed to be part of a culture of innovation, and you've shared with me ideas that have been brought to you by your coworkers, ideas that you've floated to your leadership team there at the uh, organization. Tell us a little bit about that culture of innovation that exists at Bachman. Um, yeah, I mean, I could talk for hours. All of our managers work really well together. so. And all of them know that, that especially from our 20 groups, we come in with a lot of ideas. And uh, what I love about them is we'll, we'll come in and say, hey, we have an idea and everyone listens. And a lot of them know that probably one out of every three, um, you know, might really stick. Um, but they're always open to them, always willing to listen to what's new, what's innovative, what's going to help us grow. Um, it's a great culture. If we didn't have our managers here for so long, uh, it would be harder to implement those, but I could go to our Chevy store and there's probably two, maybe three managers that have been here uh, uh, a shorter amount of time than me. Most of them are, were here when I was hired. So it's great. It's great to have that. So let's talk about your recruiting and hiring uh, process there. I know that we've had a lot of long conversations about it. Is there a, yeah. is there a code that you're cracking or... Or you, do you feel like sometimes you're almost there and then, you know, it slips away? We've got the millennials that we're working with. We've got mature people who you're, you're working with a team that's really the whole spectrum. Tell us a little bit about how you've, you've worked within that uh, challenging environment. Yeah, well, first off, all the rumors about millennials, I, I, I love millennials. I, I, I guess I'm probably borderline at my age, but... Um, I, we have we have no problem with the millennials. We've hired a few of them, and they do an incredible job. You you just have to make sure the culture of your store kind of matches to what their the perception of millennials um, is. But uh, a couple of key things we've done is we do a couple phone interviews. Once we put out all of the information that we're hiring, we do a couple phone interviews first, and we ask some pretty key questions. 
Um, and then a second thing we do is we no longer sell our department. I had someone in a, in a group a while back that said, do you love your team? I said, yeah. Do you, do you love your job? I said, yeah. Are you proud of where you are now? I said, yeah. I said, do you sell your hires on that? And I said, yeah. He said, stop. Make sure when you talk to your hires, you're not selling your department. Make sure you're talking to them about how it is a tough job. It is going to take work. And, and we give them expectations on 90 days or, or six months or nine months of what we expect. And that shift in hiring and that shift in interviewing has made a significant difference in the quality of, of people we have at this time. That sounds great. And I, I'll tell you, hiring properly seems to cure so many issues uh, going forward. So yes. uh, also, I would just be curious, one of the projects that you've exposed me to lately is this vehicle acquisition strategy and, and some of the things uh, that are just general in nature about those challenges and what you guys are working to overcome those with. Um, so yeah, the vehicle acquisition is just difficult because you have, you know, for us, we have multiple stores, multiple managers buying cars and it's just, it's, it's hard being a third party coming in and wanting to buy cars for those stores. And the challenges we're running into are I buy a great Ford F-150. I buy it at the right price. Where do I send it? Which store gets it? Which manager gets it? And you, you find yourself, you know, playing favorites. You have one store that really wants it, one store that needs it. You give it to someone else. Um, that's difficult. Uh, the second, of course, is finding them. If we're finding them on the auction, then we are the highest bidder. Congratulations, you won the car. You're the highest bidder. Um, and, the, and the third is the service drives. It's finding that, that way of buying cars through the customers that are coming into your service drives without being aggressive, without them saying, stay away from me, I just want to get my car serviced. So those are some of the challenges. We're doing well, but those are some of the challenges we've run into. Yeah, you know, it's funny you bring that up because working uh, with my dad, I remember first time I came back from the auction, he goes, uh, well, I see you bought a truckload of cars, and I believe there were eight on the carrier at the time. And I said, yeah, I got some really great deals. And he goes, well, don't be so cocky about that because you were the only one who was willing to pay as much as you did for those cars. So let's yeah. turn them as quick as we can. So the other question I would uh pose to you is let's talk about your own career development. I know that you're an active leader and part of the executive committee of our uh, Internet BDC 20 group, which is first in the country, and you've really been an inspiration to some of the other members. Why, why is that important to you, and, and how does that fit in your own personal development as a professional in this industry? Um, I have truly, and I'm not saying this because you lead the group, <laughs> I truly that 20 group has made an unbelievable uh, change uh, in me because I, I come from an accounting and finance background. I have a, a degree from U of L and went to work at a desk at UPS in the accounting office. And my personality just didn't fit that. And coming into this business, I have been very naive and seeing outside of our little culture. And the 20 group has, has opened my eyes to people all across the country and in Canada of what other people are doing. And I swear, I come back with so many ideas, I have to go down and pick two to three that I'm going to implement. But for my own development, I mean, just saying that, it's obvious that, that learning from those other dealers in that group makes a huge impact in me moving forward for the next five to 10 years. I'm sure there are some projects we're doing now that five or 10 years from now, we're going to say, man, that... This this is natural. We we feel like we've been doing this forever, and I bet if we trace it back, we would trace it back to one of those twenty groups. Absolutely. Well, thank you. I have one one uh, request for you. If you were uh, starting a BDC, or if you're operating a BDC, and someone reached out to you and said, "Mark, what is the one thing you do from a process or tactic standpoint that really makes the most difference?" Uh, in connecting with a customer and inspiring them to want to do business with Bachman? Wow. Um, I guess my knee-jerk reaction would be uh, probably two. I couldn't pick one. I'd have to say two within one. That would be speed and quality. The speed of getting to that customer as fast as you possibly can to beat out all these people and smiling when you're on the phone. If you're not smiling, if you don't convey yourself as, 
as being excited and being excited about the company you work for. Um, uh, without those together, you, you cannot, in my opinion, you cannot run a successful uh, BDC department for, a, for an auto group. Yeah, that always cracks me up. People will say to me, the uh, OEM just gave us our report and they're after us because our response time is slower than the, the average or whatever. And my response is pretty fearless when I say to them, well, why would you want to be slow with your response? Why is the OEM having to kick you in the seat and tell you to speed up? That should just be natural. And, and, and what, you, yes. what you've just shared with us about the smiling on the phone, this is just the organics of success. And, and I think part of what makes you successful, your operation successful, and the whole Bachman organization uh, celebrating its 30th anniversary and then some as the whole group. So thank you very much for joining me today, Mark. And I look forward to talking to you more in the future. No problem. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. It's been a real joy to watch Mark develop over the years. 11 years at that dealership, and it's remarkable all the things that they've been able to develop over the time. The, the director of business development is more nowadays than just answering e email leads and responding to telephone calls coming into the dealership. Think about your role in the dealership and how you can expand and help your business grow overall. I'm David Kane. Thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time here on Kane & Company.